Good morning, everybody. My name is Holger Fese. Welcome to our second session about the new member of our Cipotec 5 family, the high-speed busbar transfer device 7VU85. After the unboxing event last month, we continue today with uh, the deep dive into the technical, techno uh, technological principles by presenting you the typical applications and solutions of the 7VU85. Moreover, we will show you the hardware selection with our Cipotec 5 configurator and how to select the correct number of function points for specific applications. Finally, we will explain the, uh, the HSPT function and show you the differences between ATS and HSPT. Before I hand over to Mr. Sebastian Schneider, the product manager of our 7VU85, I'd like to remind you of our third session in September, where we will present how to test an HSPT device with Omicron Relay SIM test. For this last event, we have invited an expert from the company Omicron, Mr. Florian Fischer. Together with our product manager, he will show you how to test dynamically with hardware in the loop and the world first test with software in the loop by using Cipotec Digital Twin connected with Relay SIM test. But now it's time to start the second session. Thus, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Sebastian Schneider. Sebastian, welcome. Please. Hello, yeah. Olga. Hi, hi. Please show us the, the specifics of this great new device. Yes, I will do. Yeah. Hello from my side. So my name is Sebastian Schneider. I would like to present today the second session where we go a little bit more in deep uh, to the yeah, technical and um, yeah, functional um, yeah, behavior of the 7VU uh, device. And um, I have structured my presentation today as follow. Uh, we, or I would like to give you a general introduction about the bus bar transfer. Um, what is a high-speed bus bar transfer? And uh, we talk about the applications and where the bus bar transfer is applied. Um, what is necessary or why is a high-speed bus bar transfer necessary for industry stations? And what are the key requirements? And in the end of the first part of my presentation, we go into the device selection in the Zipotec 5 configurator. So come we to our, 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 my first slide. And therefore, we talk about high-speed bus bar transfer, HSPT device. So uh, what does it mean? So that means we have a motor bus where um, yeah, inductive motors are connected. And we want to transfer the motor load from one incomer to the other incomer. And this needs to be open one CB, CB1 on the left side, and close CB3 on the right side. But this needs to be uh, in, in a very, or uh, this Interaction needs to be in a very fast time. That means in a high speed time for this transfer. And of course, uh, a second requirement for the HSPT is that we have to uh, transfer the load, the motor load safe. That means with the uninterrupted power supply for the whole factory. So where we have such a high speed bus bar trail, or where we can find such a uh, high-speed bus bar transfer system. And this is usually used in power plants, petrochemical industry, pharmaceutical industry, hospitals, data center, or in a man, um, semiconductor manufacturing. Um, on my next slide, um, we have a deeper look into the application in the power plant, for example, where we have the generator, where we have the auxiliary buses, and uh, yeah, where we have uh, the different uh, power sources from the running source and from the alternative source. And this is usually used in a coal fire power station, gas fire power station, combined cycle power station, or in a nuclear power station, where the uh, yeah, continuous power supply is very important for the cooling of the reactor, for example. So typical requirement for the HSPT system is that we manual transfer the, the load from the um, main grid to the um, um, alternative grid. And this is usually done um, in the case when the generator is start up or shut down. 
or we have to uh, make an automatic transfer in case of a fault in the generator or in the upstream of the generator to the grid. The next um, yeah, uh, very common application is in the industry station or in the industry application. So here we have typically two incomers and mostly one sectionalized CB. And uh, we found these usually where we have a continuous industry processes, for example, for steel plant, or we have some chemical, uh, chemical industry or petrochemical industry. Therefore, we need uh, the automatic transfer in case of a fault on the incomer, or we want to switch back um, after the fault clearance, or we want to initiate a manual transfer in case of a maintenance of the, um, of the main income. So why is the HSBT necessary for industrial stations? In industrial station, we have a large numbers of asynchronous motors, which are working in industry stations for continuous process, for example, uh, pumping, so for some heating systems and so on. Uh, and therefore, we need to supply the energy all the time uh, with, with an uninterrupted uh, operation. In case of a fault in the incomer or in a transformer, the motor on the motor bus will slow down and go to the standstill. Um, and with this problem, we can't meet uh, the requirement um, for the continuous process, and we have enorm an enormous economic losses in a uh, in the industry. Uh, for example, in petrochemical industry and, and also in chemical industry, we have another risk and the, the, the second risk is that we have explosion or, or flammable environmental there. So, and therefore, not only the economic loss is, is there, we have also a serious risk for the safety. And the question is how can we help to ensure the customer or to ensure industrial processes and safety? But before we go into the solution, I would like to have a check on the bus bar voltage. What does it mean the voltage goes down when we're losing the main in feed? Here we have a closer look to the bus bar voltage character in the industry station. So on the on the left side, you see here the circle diagram. And this is where the voltage is going down after we're losing the main infeed. That means the motor is running down and the voltage is also going down. The voltage has a, yeah, the amplitude have an expo exponential degree and the, the frequency have a linear, linear degree. And that means with with the longer time when the with the longer time when the motor is not uh, let me check my pointer here. Yeah, we see here the, in the circle diagram, we the voltage and also the frequency is going down after we losing the main infeed. And with that, the amplitude is going down and also the frequency on the motor bus is going down. And beside that. Also, the phase angle gets bigger and bigger um, after a certain time. So, but always the, the delta angle or uh, the phase angle is behind the alternative incomer. So, what that means with the longer time, the delta angle will increase. And this needs to be considered for the HSPT system or for the transfer system, for the motor bus transfer system. Um, when we talk about the continuous industrial processes, then we have also key requirements for such a bus bar transfer system in, in all these stations. So that means, can an automatic system help in that case to transfer the load from one incomer to the other incomer? For example, in most of the applications, we have these so-called automatic transfer systems. Transfer principle, the voltage amplitude and the frequency amplitude on the bus bar is very low at the closing instance. Uh, mostly, we close the breaker on the death bus. This kind of transfer takes several seconds. The influence on the motors is very low because the voltage is also very low on the, on the motor bus. But afterwards, after we um, close the breaker, we have a 
yeah, we have a high motor starting current because um, the motor starts in some groups and uh, this uh, brings some yeah, brings some issues or brings some influence transients into the um, into the power system at the closing instance. So finally, um, we can say that an ATS system can't met the continuous industrial industrial processes, um, and uh, therefore, an ATS system is not suitable to deliver the uninterrupted power supply. Now, we have a check for the high-speed busbar transfer system. Um, the requirement for such, uh, such a system is that we want to transfer the load in high speed in a very, very short time. And that means in milliseconds. We want also to have a safe transfer. That means we have to be sure that we transfer not on the on a second fault, but we transfer in a very short time, uh, that we have some uh, considering some blocking conditions. And we also limited the impact. And this is very important, of course, the impact on the on the motor, the impact current for the power system, and also the torque on the motor. And this needs to be avoided, and therefore you need a very fast transfer. So now we come to the same table as before, but now for the high-speed busbar transfer device. The transfer principle is that the voltage, amplitude, and the frequency on the busbar are high at the closing instance. So that means we are closing the breaker on the bus with voltage and not with vo with, without voltage as before. So we are talking about transfer speed of 10 cycles, which is given by the IEEE. Um, in total, we are less than 200 milliseconds, including the breaker time. And this is what is written in the standard. The influence on the motor um, should be less because we want to limit the impact current, the starting current, and also uh, the torque on the motor at the closing instant. And the influence in the end of the power system is also should be also limited because we would like to avoid any high starting currents of the motor. So comparable with the ATS and HSBT system can meet uh, can meet all the requirements uh, for a continuous industrial process. So that means the key requirement for the for the HSBT system in a continuous uh, industry process is it should be high uh, high speed and it should be safe transfer uh, for uninterrupted power supply. Um, as I told before, safe transfer means small impact current and impact torque on the motor and also on the power supply in the, in the network. So the residual voltage character on the bus with asynchronous motors, that means we have a, a decreeing, uh, decreeing seamless wave and we have to check the amplitude, the frequency, and of course the phase angle. This is later important for the algorithm. Comparable with the ATS is an HPT more suitable or better, yeah, more suitable um, to use it in industrial processes where we want to supply an uninterrupted uh, power supply. So then we come to the next slide and we come to the device selection in our CPOTEC 5 configurator. I think um, the CP5 configurator is, is well known to you. Um, here we see the whole family um, and the basic functionality. And the last but not least, we have here the HSPT device. At least um, here you have to choice here at the HSPT device for the high-speed busbar transfer. In the next step of your selection, you will find predefined hardware variants. So we have uh, we have pre-selected some hardware variants which fits perfectly to our application templates here on the on the right side. You can see we have now with version 9.60 up to five application templates which meets more or less 90% of all the applications in the world. So and um, you can see here 
Each application template will fit to a different hardware with the different variants of I.O. and uh, VTs and CTs and so on. Come on to the next, come, we, um, come to the next slide and here we see the different variants of applications. So we have here the, I think the three typical variants, variances um, where we have an incomer or we have a single bus bar with two incomers. Uh, or we have a single bus bar with intersection CB or tie CB with two incomers, or we have a single bus bar with three incomers. So, and you see here also the, the device gets bigger and bigger. So that means we get more, um, more expansion modules to connect the VT, CTs, and also binary information from the circuit breaker, what we need to, uh, to operate perfectly with the HSPT functionality. Then we go back to the device selection. So, and here we can see, um, this is an overview about the selected devices. You found the corresponding product code uh, uh, regarding to our, uh, your selection. You found the number of IOs and CTs and VTs. Um, you got the information regarding housing, HMI and power supply. On the, on the right side, you see here, uh, the, the plug-in modules and communication. And last but not least, and this is, I think, one of the important steps here for the HSPT device is to select the function points. Now we have a closer look to the function points here. Now you see here in the configurator, there is a choice of the different um, application templates which are available. Um, so, and then you see, okay, when you select one of these application templates, then we have also predefined the selected function point, which is necessary to run these applications. So in a basic application, that means a single bus bar with two incomers, there is no function point it's necessary to run the functions with two circuit breaker and two transfer direction. If it becomes more complex, with three circuit breaker or more and intersection circuit breaker and different transfer directions, then you have to choose, of course, the circuit breaker, the HSPT function himself, transfer group and transfer direction, which is more explained later. But of course, therefore we charge some function points. And in the end, do not forget to confirm your choice and uh, to order the device with the right number of function points. So, coming to the second part of my presentation, and this is the basic introduction of an HSPT system. We, uh, I would like to explain the basic logic of an HSPT system. Then I would like to come to the wiring connection. And in the end, I will show one slide regarding the cooperation between uh, the 7VU85 device and protection devices in your application. So this is a picture or this is a slide where we can see the structure of the HSPT system. So that means we have the HSPT functionality himself, but the HSPT function is split in different points and we have uh, a reliability check for readiness and unreadiness. We have multiple sensitive start types. We have a blocking logic. We have set up a transfer sequence. And at the end, we have the fast and safe algorithm for closing the breaker. Then we go to the first part and this is the readiness and unreadiness check. And therefore I would like to present to you some, uh, yeah, some, some uh, special cases, use cases, and we discussed, we discussed this use cases. So normally in a yeah, normal operation in the industry, we have uh, here a sectionalized single bus bar with two incomers. Um, in the middle, you can see here the tie CB. And when we count the transfer directions, we can see here that such an application for transfer directions is possible. In case of a fault in a, in a system, we have to transfer the load from bus bar one to bus bar two. And we therefore, we have to close the breaker three, the tie CB, and to open the breaker one. And um, after the fault clearance in, in comma one, of course, we need to switch back. That means we have to open the breaker, uh, the breaker three and to close the breaker one again. So, and how we provide this, oh, sorry, this 
was a little bit fast. And um, this is the expected transfer direction, what we can get here. This is what I, I told or already explained that we have the incomer one, which is going to uh, have a transfer direction to sex, uh, section bus bar two, incomer two, have a transfer direction to section bus bar two, uh, to bus bar one, and um, other way around. So therefore we got these four uh, transfer directions in total, and we have to define this transfer direction by adding it in Dixie. So now we have to check which one transfer directions are available and yeah, are ready for transfer. So and th this depends basically on the availability of the circuit breaker, of course. So that means we are always checking the status of the circuit breaker and checking if this transfer direction is available. And we do that um, by using the auxiliary context of the circuit breaker. Here and that for, for this application, we have closed in comma one and in comma two, the tie CB is open. So that means we can switch from in comma one to bus bar two or from in comma two to bus bar one, but not uh, from bus bar two to in comma one or in the other way around. So this is not possible. Therefore the HSPT function said, okay, um, we have now these four uh, these four bus bar directions or transfer directions and two of them are not active due to the status of the tie CB. So ready <coughs> means, <coughs> sorry, ready means that we are ready for transfer, unready, uh, unready means we are not um, yeah, ready for transfer and is not allowed to transfer. So after we have the, yeah, yeah, so now we have the fault case uh, where we have a fault in the incomer. Uh, that means the CV1 in the income one is tripped, um, the CV, <clears throat> CV2 is closed, and CV3 is also closed. That means we now we get the energy from the alternative source and we deliver the energy to the both of this bus bar. So, and then if we check here the, uh, the conditions, you will see, okay, um, <clears throat> device said um, all the directions are not available due to the trip of the circuit breaker <clears throat> and we have to clearance the fault in the, in the main incomer and then we can initiate uh, a transfer back and this is what we here have in the, on the next side after the fault and incomer is cleared then we got the readiness for the third um, transfer direction and we say okay we can switch back. So the expected transfer direction, well, uh, the next uh, next operation here where we have uh, CB1 is closed, CB2 is open and CB3 is closed. That means we deliver the energy from both incomers to both bus bus sections. And therefore we got the following transfer direction. That means we can switch from incoma one to incoma two or from, in, or from incoma two to incoma one here. So, and therefore, we got the following direction um, by closing the breaker. So that means um, the in comma one to in comma two is ready. In that case, if the breaker is open, um, if the breaker two is open and the breaker one and three is closed. For the other way around, it is not ready because uh, this is blocked by the um, <clears throat> by the internal uh, check of the uh, of the circuit breaker status. So after we clear the fault um, in the in comma two, then we can switch back. So now we see here, uh, I will go back one slide. So here we have already the breaker open and now we have the breaker closed and now we can transfer the load from in comma two to in comma one. And this uh, transfer direction is now ready. So that was the first insight for the readiness and the unreadiness check. So I think it is very important to have this unreadiness check um, that uh, this transfer direction, which is not able to transfer, needs to be blocked. So and only the, the direction which is possible to transfer, we can use. Now we come to the next step and this is the multiple start sensitive start types. 
And now we talk about different faults in your application. The first fault is that we have a fault on the main incomer <clears throat> or in a transformer. Therefore, this is so-called the electrical fault start. We can force these electrical fault start to transfer the load uh, by using a binary input. Therefore, um, we detecting this fault in, in the circuit, in the, in, the, in the power supply, and uh, this detection is used by the binary input uh, on the, yeah, uh, in, in our device, which we can connect, uh, for example, the trip of the um, 87T or 87L. And we can use this signal to initiate the transfer. The next um, is, uh, for example, a fault in a control system could be a fault in a control system of the uh, of the fence of the transformer, could be a fault uh, in a control system of the turbine, of the boiler. Um, mechanical mechanical topics or mechanical issues can happen, or we're losing some, some, some uh, other electric pumps or cooling pumps. So therefore, we have a second um, binary input to start a non-electrical fault. And this can also be used um, by, um, yeah, by starting these over in the binary input. So the third sensitive start type is the CB inadvertent open. So that means somebody is open unexpectedly. The circuit breaker could be a misoperation, could be a problem in the control system. Um, this is detected by the open position and the incomer current. So, and we start these um, four type or the, this multiple start type by detecting the incomer current. That means we're measuring here the incomer current and we get also the auxiliary context of the um, circuit breaker to get this information and to start here the, uh, the transfer. The next step is, um, um, yeah, so the next slide here, this, uh, for example, uh, when we got a remote trip or a remote opening uh, open of the circuit breaker, which can also be, uh, yeah, which can also be an, an, an misoperation. So, and our solution for that is that we have the non-electrical fault start type, which is uh, forced by a binary input, or we can use, for example, here uh, the possibility to add some additional starts uh, criteria for a simultaneously transfer, and therefore we have to connect here as well the CB open position to a binary input. And then we start the simultaneously transfer. So then we have also here the second solution, and I think this second solution for the yeah, inadvertent open start is more convenient. And for that, of course, if we lose the main power here, the main infeed on the on the on the bus bar, we can use as well here the under voltage or under frequency start as well. And this is more sensitive, and uh, we recommend to use that one. Yeah, here's it written uh, as as uh, as note for you. Under frequency start is more sensitive and more reliable for such a case. The next case is that we have a fault in the main infeed. Um, therefore, we can use, for example, the binary input for the electrical fault start or an additional criteria here for the sequential transfer. Um, we can use the uh, connection from the bus bar protection to, to trip or to initiate um, the um, transfer. Solution one could be as well uh, solution two could be as well also uh, the possibility by detecting the under voltage or under frequency on the motor bus. So that means combined um, with this condition, we have also the information when we lose here the main infeed, we have no income occurrence. So, and therefore we can start uh, the sequential transfer. <clears throat> so after the fault is cleared, yeah, mostly we want to switch back uh, we want to recover uh, the main incomer, and therefore we want to initiate uh, a manual start, and therefore you will find as well a binary input to trigger the manual start. A manual start is always uh, done by a, yeah, a parallel um, transfer. So now we come to the 
expected transfer directions here. In that case, um, that means we have here four transfer directions and you can see we can switch from in comma one to bus bar two, from in comma two to bus bar one or from section bus bar two to in comma one, but that is only a backwards or recovering direction and this should be started as manual. So in the normal operation part two, uh, where we have here CB1 is closed, CB2 is open, CB3 is closed, and therefore we got these both uh, transfer direction and uh, from one to two is the, 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 uh, the main uh, transfer direction and from two to one is uh, the manual start only because after recovering the, the infeed one, then we switch back to a normal condition. Come to the next um, to the next um, point, and this is the blocking logic of our HSBT system. Um, and uh, here we have different blocking logics where we do not want to initiate some transfers, and this is mostly when we have a fault on the local bus. And for that, we do not want to start with the underwater squad area. That means we want to block um, the, the HSBT functionality himself. And this is, um, we block this logic by the incomer current and we block the under voltage um, functionality. That means we detect the HSPT function is detecting the fault on the motor bus. And uh, for that, uh, we initiate the fault detection and we block the uh, this criteria. Additionally, we can also use here the binary input to block the HSPT function when we got, for example, the bus bar protection or an overcurrent protection trip, uh, external over, uh, overcurrent protection trip. In the next case, um, after, yeah, we also do not want to transfer here when the fault is detected on the bus um, and um, we want to make sure that the that the dropout um, uh, is, or is not dropping out by himself and keeps the blocking. So that means we have to clear, um, we have to reset the whole function and then we can initiate the transfer again. If we have a faulty motor, for example, um, then of course, we also do not want to start a transfer. Uh, we want to have a blocking of the transfer system. So that means we have to clear the fault in the motor feeder and uh, then the voltage comes back. So that means there is no need for a transfer. So the protection functions, for example, the uh, overcurrent function or some, some differential functions needs to be, um, yeah, needs to be blocked in that case the HSPT function and um, so we do not want to start some transfer. Here um, is uh, the same case so uh, that means uh, after the fault is cleared um, as I told to you uh, that means the motor is tripped the voltage comes back to nominal voltage and no start is triggered by the HSPT functionality. So when we have, for example, um, yeah, a problem with the PT, uh, we have a broken wire and we're losing the, the information that uh, we have no bus bar voltage. In that case, we also want to avoid that the bus bar, uh, the high-speed bus bar transfer is triggering and transferring and therefore we are also blocking the, the transfer direction or the transfer uh, functionality. So that means in case of a, uh, lost of the PT or the voltage information, we also block the transfer. Or the second case here, uh, when we have a MCB open detected, then we also do not want to initiate a transfer and therefore we use the binary input. There's a special binary input for the MCB open and this will block the under voltage and the under frequency start. So, for example, uh, we have some we have some uh, usual cases: CB withdrawn or CB in test. And for that, we also do not want to test or do not want to um, initiate a transfer. 
Therefore, we can use the blocking input of the HSPT functionality to block the whole uh, transfer directions and multiple start types. Or we have, uh, for example, a CB open manually. In that case, we also do not want to do start the transfer and for that we can use as well the binary input for blocking HSPT. And of course, um, we will have also starting currents on the motor bus. That means the, the motor is starting and the voltage gets a drop, a voltage drop or a voltage goes down. And in that case, of course, we want to check these, we want to, um, we want to um, monitor these. And uh, in that case, we also do not want to start the transfer. And this is combined with the incomer current. That means we detecting uh, combined with the under voltage start, uh, we also checking the current and then we say, okay, there's a high starting current. This is not a fault. So we have to block the transfer. So, and in the end, um, the, I have two cases. Uh, this is one case that's a power dip in, a, in the main infeed or in a power grid. So, and for that, um, if there's a power dip or a voltage dip in the in the in the power supply, then in the grid, then we do not want to start because we are also checking here the income occurrence uh, in combined with the under voltage and under frequency start. And this is, of course, very important when we have a light load on the motor bus. So, and of course, um, the HSPT functionality cannot work in case of a problem with a CB position or we have an abnormal CB position, CB is in the, in the middle position, for example, and that, therefore or all CBs are closed, then we do not want to start in the transfer as well. So that means all the transfer directions are unready. This is normally used when you have an electrical problem or you have an electrical fault, then um, normally you use the sequential transfer and that means open before close. Um, this is very important to open the 4D breaker and then to close the alternative source um, to be sure that uh, the, the motor bus have no fault and we have no influence from the Ford on the motor bus to do the calculation for the algorithm. And if we have a look here to this uh, sequential transfer, uh, that means now we open the breaker at first, then we have a very short action time and we give the close command. And in the end, we have a short dead time on the motor bus where we have no voltage, where the, where the frequency and also the voltage is decreasing. And um, this is usually used for all these electrical fault start type. But of course, if you need, you can also choose here the simultaneously transfer for the electrical fault start type. This is where we come to the next point. So uh, to the same simultaneous transfer, that means uh, we 
open and close the breaker at the same time. Uh, and uh, therefore, we will have not so much influence on the motor bus. Uh, that means we have not so much uh, or so um, big voltage drop on the motor bus. Now we see that here. So that means we give the open command uh, for the for the incoming breaker and give the close command at the same time. And um, the closing time um, for the for the position of the breaker. And you see here in the end open and close is very short together because normally the open time is a little bit faster than the, than the closing time of the circuit breaker. So, But finally here with the simultaneously transfer, you see there is a very, very short dead time on the, on the motor bus. And of course, this avoids any transient problems on the motor bus uh, is. But finally, we need to distinguish here if the breaker which gets the open command is not getting open, then we have to trip the alternative breaker source. But this is the decoupling function and the decoupling function is also implemented for the simultaneously transfer. Yeah. Um, the simultaneously transfer is recommended for non-electrical fault start, as I uh, told before, for example, for the um, yeah, for the control system, if you have a fault on the control system, or if you have a fault, for example, in the mechanical uh, mechanical monitoring of the of the generator. So, and after the fault normally is cleared in the main incomer, we can also use uh, the uh, simultaneously transfer to transfer back. That means to recover. Um, or to switch back from the alternative source to the running source and therefore we can use the parallel or it is recommended to use it uh, by a paralleling transfer. So that means with the paralleling transfer we have a very short time where both breakers are in and then we close the uh, we open the breaker to the alternative source of course or we open the breaker to the tie CD. And this is what the paralleling transfer is doing. So that means we have no interruption on the, on the motor bus uh, and on the motor voltage because both breakers are opening and closing uh, or both infeeds are closed at the same time. So, and we open later and we closing earlier. So, and here you see the overview. Um, that means this is the available sequential uh, set of a transfer sequence for the electrical fault type, um, for the inadvertent open start, for the under voltage or under frequency start, for the manual start, and for the additional start criteria, which can be settable by yourself. That means this is a user um, user defined settable start type for the sequential. And you see the same for the simultaneous. And therefore, we have also an additional start type for simultaneously transfer. So in the next version, uh, we got also the possibility that we got here the possibility to start simultaneously transfer also during an electrical fault start. And in the end, the paralleling transfer is used to do all the manual switching in your industry or power plant application. So, Coming to the next, and uh, this is more going in deep into the algorithm. Uh, now I will explain the different algorithm uh, for the HSPT functionality. <clears throat> yeah, customer requirement is uh, that we want to have um, a parallel, at first the parallel transfer. So, and the parallel transfer is well known, I think, from the Synchro check functionality. So, therefore, we have to. Uh, we have to supervise uh, or we have to monitor only the data angle, the data voltage and the data frequency be between the both incomers. So and if everything fits well, then we can close the breaker. That means both grids are synchrome. For the SQL transfer, it becomes more complicated because we have to open the breaker first and then we have to close the the other breaker and during that time the voltage on the motor bus is running down and this is the yeah this is the yeah, residual voltage and we need to yeah, compare the residual voltage with the reference voltage 
And here we have a very nice picture for it. Uh, and this is the so-called snake here, uh, where we see how the voltage phase or the phaser from the HSBC system is, um, yeah, is uh, or from the from the voltages here. Here, here you see the voltage. Oh, sorry, here you see the voltage from the alternative in in comma source. This is here the uh, the, the voltage which is measured on in feed two, and here we see the residual voltage on the motor bus, and um, the voltage and also the phase angle and the frequency is changing with this uh, with this snake here. So that means the voltage becomes smaller and smaller, and also the frequency becomes smaller, and the delta angle between the uh, alternative uh, voltage or the alternative uh, power uh, power source and the um, power source here on the voltage on the motor bus becomes bigger and bigger. So therefore, we need to distinguish all these um, different um, aspects to come to a right decision when we have to close the breaker. So, and that means uh, the parallel transfer in the end is always initiated by a stable sinus wave and the sequential uh, transfer will be initiated by a decreeing uh, decreeing in a sinus wave. But when we have to close the breaker, so we have to close the breaker um, only then when we have the voltage on the motor bus. So uh, an AD, ADS system is doing that when we have no voltage on the bus. So that means we need to close the breaker as soon as possible. Yeah? If we are very fast, uh, then we have a less impact on the motor bus, uh, less impact on the motor and also on the power up, so on the power system. So how is the HSBT functionality working and uh, how are or where these requirements come from? The requirements are this, described in the guideline of the IEEE C5041. And um, therefore, the behavior of an HSBT system is described there. Um, and um, also the, the technical behavior um, that the voltage is going down, voltage and frequency is going down with 1.33 uh, volt per hertz um, on the motor bus. And this needs to be distinguished for the algorithm. And this is described and defined here in the this um, yeah, standard, uh, dieses uh, IEEE standard. So, and you see here, uh, this is our reference voltage, and this is our uh, on the main infeed or on the, on the alternative infeed. And here we see the voltage on the uh, on the motor bus. This is our residual voltage. And in between, the voltage and the frequency were changing by uh, 1.33 volt per hertz. So, and therefore we have different possibilities, of course, uh, to, yeah, to switch or to close the breaker. So we have different points here in that, in that diagram, it's very good to see um, that we can switch the alternative breaker or we can close the alternative breaker here on different position. But therefore we need to we need to make a calculation internally or we need to measure the voltage or we need to measure the phase angle and so on. So um, when we come to the different algorithms, then um, we talk about we talk about the uh, possibilities here. The first one is that we want to close um, the, the breaker in a very, very fast time. This is our uh, fast algorithm, or this is our so-called um, yeah, fast uh, mode. So where we can close the breaker in the a, in a, in a first part of this, of this equation or of this um, diagram. That means um, when the incomer, the running incomer trips, there is a chance to close the CB with this kind of fast mode. And therefore here you see uh, the setting table here, which is given by uh, in Dixie. And you have to set these uh, for the fast mode. That means you can activate this fast mode. And we have only three parameters to set these here. So that means we have a delta voltage, we have a delta um, 
yeah, delta angle, and we also need to, be, to we need to measure or to distinguish here the minimal voltage on the motor bus. So, and if these parameters are fulfilled, of course, then we are closing the breaker in a very, very fast time. So that means internally we can make the decision um, yeah, up to, yeah, I think, uh, more or less in 10 milliseconds. Uh, we got it. We make a decision to close the breaker, and afterwards, of course, the breaker time needs to be considered. So that means, in total, when we have, for example, a circuit breaker which needs um, 60 or 80 milliseconds, then we can close the breaker in total with yeah, 90 or 91 milliseconds, including the operation time of the binary output. The next uh, step is um, here at step two. And here we see we have two parts here. And um, for that, we have a special algorithm implemented, which do the prediction of the voltage and of the, of the frequency. And therefore, the device needs to be calculated the best time when we have to close um, the, uh, the breaker of the alternative source. And this um, algorithm or this mode is called real-time fast mode. And I think this um, is very outstanding here. So this uh, algorithm, that means this algorithm is self-adapting and calculating um, the, the point where we close the breaker. And most of the most of the transfers are um, yeah are done with the real-time fast mode. So. Now we have a closer look here to the real-time fast mode. So the, you see the next stage here for the real-time fast mode, uh, the same behavior as before. We, we have the possibility uh, to activate or deactivate the functionality. We have the different parameters for the fast mode and uh, that's all. So the next part is the synchronous uh, closing and uh, therefore we are now here. So that means um, close to the synchronous mode uh, that means uh, the the voltage phaser, uh, the the bus bar phaser, and also the phaser of the alternative source are, um, are equal to each other. So, and that means if we close or we give the close command in that in that part here, then we closing uh, both grids is synchronous. Good, and this is here uh, the setting sheet here for this in phase mode or synchronous mode. Uh, so, and finally, if you have a look here on that, on that uh, diagram, you can see here the different modes and you can see here as well the dotted line. Uh, and this is the residual voltage which is going down over the time, over the cycle. And you see also the influence on the phase angle and as well the influence on the voltage. That means after a certain time, we have no possibility to switch or to transfer in fast mode or in real time fast mode. Um, or in phase mode, then we have to wait until the residual voltage is under the 30% that we can um, transfer the load uh, to avoid any damage on the motor and to avoid any transient uh, problems in the, in, the, um, in the power supply of the, of the application. <clears throat> And in the end, of course, uh, which is not showing here, uh, we have also the possibility beside the residual voltage mode, we have also the possibility to transfer after a long mode, but therefore um, a long time mode, but therefore then the voltage is close to zero on the bus. So now we see it here again, um, uh, this, this table. So that means we have the different modes available for the different sequential transfer. Uh, we have here the paralleling transfer, which is uh, a synchro check functionality. Uh, when we talk about the fast transfer, then uh, we always talk about fast mode, uh, real-time fast mode and in-phase mode. Or when we talk about backup transfer, then normally we talk about this ATS functionality, which is using the residual voltage at a long time mode, but this takes seconds. And the switching types are automatically calculated by detecting and um, yeah, uh, automatically calculated and detecting and deciding by the device. So there's nothing to do from your side. So the device is doing 
the uh, calculation is doing the decision and close the breaker when the, the, the conditions are met. So now we come to a short overview, but I will, uh, due to the time, I will skip these uh, uh, very fast. So you got the slides afterwards, uh, so you can more uh, focusing on that on that overview here, uh, which describes uh, the different, um, yeah, the different uh, operational values and uh, modes as well. And uh, therefore I will skip that. Then um, I will also give a short overview about the user stories here. Uh, we have to we have <clears throat> discussed the different user stories, and I think it is very helpful for you um, to go through um, <clears throat> to go one by one by the user stories and what you have to do or what you have to consider for your application in case if you want to consider these kind of user stories. And we have in total sixty user stories, and which was already more or less discussed in my presentation. So then we come very shortly to the wiring connection. Um, and of course, for the HSPT system, we need to connect the voltage transformers uh, to measure the voltage on the main incomer or uh, on the alternative source. For that, uh, we can connect the voltage face to face or face to earth. We recommend always to use face to face. It um, is not necessary to connect here a three phase voltage. It could be as uh, it could be a face to face voltage. But for the um, motor bus, we recommend at the moment to have the three phase voltage connection type. In a later version, we want to oops, we want to. Um, I need to go back. No, no. Uh, in a later version, we, we also want to provide here for the motor bus um, a voltage measurement of a single phase voltage. But therefore, we need to uh, make some adaption. And also, the speed of the HSPT system is then not so fast because uh, the three phase voltage connection type here um, offers more possibility for faster algorithm. But especially, for applications or for retrofit applications, of course, we will have um, a single phase measurement as well on the voltage bus. And therefore, we implement these with one of the next functionalities. So when we talk about the current, then we have two currents uh, to measure. And this is in the, um, this is in the incomer. So uh, and here, the incomer CTs are very important and necessary. So we need uh, the incomer current to be uh, to be sure or ensure um, that we have a low voltage start or under frequency start. And uh, the, the HSPT uh, functionality is not triggered one uh, wrong in that case. Or we use as well here also the current information as an additional criteria for the auxiliary context but, uh, or for the um, uh, for the open position of the breaker to be sure okay uh, the the breaker is already open there's no current flowing so and we use that as well so then we as we, uh, we need as well here um, the the circuit breaker position uh, the auxiliary contacts of the incomer the open commands of the incomer the closed commands of the incomer and also on the section cb um, one additional information this uh, what i forgot before the current transformer here on the section cb is not necessary so you can add these but um, we have implemented with the version 9.30 and 9.40 um, the CB without current, so and therefore it is not necessary to add here the current to that CB. So you can use the new function group CB without current, and you can save some money for an additional current inputs. <clears throat> now we come to the interaction between uh, the seven view and the protection devices. Mm -hmm. So the first interaction is. Um, yeah, in most cases, uh, the interaction with the binary input to block the, uh, the HSPT system, or we have the interaction uh, that when we have a fault on the motor bus, so that means we need to detect this fault uh, by himself or and clear the fault. And uh, due to the due um, the meanwhile, the, the HSPT functionality needs to be blocked, or we have a fault in the protection system here um, or in a 
transformer, uh, for example, this is detected uh, normally by uh, you know, transform protection uh, by an 80, 87T or an overcurrent function. So, and we give, <clears throat> give this trigger to the HSPT uh, for fault start, for example. So, because here we are inside the power plant or inside the industry station, and therefore we are, can have these trigger by the binary input to start the transfer. And last but not least, we also detect the voltage dip or under frequency or under, under voltage. So, and therefore normally we do not have, uh, we do not have this information. So therefore we uh, only checking that the voltage is going down on the, um, on the in feed. So, and therefore we can trigger a transfer to the alternative source. And this is how uh, HSBT functionality is interacting. So that means we directly checking there is a fault on the bus or we got the information from a uh, protection system that the fault, there's a fault in a transformer, in the incomer, or we detecting by himself that the voltage is, uh, or we have an under voltage or under frequency condition to start the transfer. So now we come to my last slides um, and uh, we want to talk about some highlights of the HSPT. So here we see the overview of our CProtect 5 system. So um, we also use the same hardware and firmware as for the other protection functions. So that means the HSPT functionality is perfectly adapted in the CProtect 5 architecture. So what why is our 7VU85 so suitable for complex applications? So, because this is very flexible in hard and software. And we can provide a lot of transfer directions here also for complex applications. So, especially here for a double bus bar with the direction series, we have multiple transfer directions. And uh, with one, with one HSPT um, functionality, you can have up to 12 transfer directions. So, but of course, this needs to be handled as well. And as I said, uh, the modular hardware design um, and the possibility of the flexible extension, we can have, uh, we support up to 20 circuit breaker with one, uh, with one functionality. So, and this needs to be as well also configured in Dixie. And therefore we have some special matrix now initiated or implemented. Um, to make it here on a graphical way to, to set the crosses, which CV meets, needs to be open, which CV needs to be closed, and which CV or, or disconnector needs to be supervised, that these kind of transfer directions are available. And in the end, of course, we have also the possibility to group then and to say, okay, for the transfer group one, uh, please, um, the first priority is from one to two, and the other priority is from one to three for more complex application. And if we have these priority topics, then um, of course here for uh, um, single bus bar with three incomers, then we can use that to say, okay, my my my, my usual operation or my usual transfer direction is from one to two. Uh, if these transfer direction is not available, then the HSPT system should be uh, transfer the load from one to three, and this can be defined by the customer himself. And this is the corresponding uh, matrix for the transfer priority group in Dixie. So, come we to the end. So, that means the 7V, uh, 7U85 high speed bus bar transfer device or functionality provides the function himself, uh, provides up to 20 circuit breaker, uh, provides a flexible load shedding functionality to shed the load in the beginning of the transfer or shortly before the transfer. We have uh, initiated or implemented the, the improved ultra fast transfer uh, algorithm where we have time of, um, yeah, equal than uh, greater or equal 10 milliseconds for the fast mode. Uh, additionally, you can add some protection functions, which can be used, for example, for additional start criteria um, for power plants application. For example, it could be a reverse power protection. Uh, you can uh, use the reverse power protection functionality to initiate a simultaneously transfer or sequential transfer. Um, we have on one hand the modular design of hard and software 
uh, we have the different switching sequences um, and the different switching modes. Um, we have up to five predefined application templates. And of course, we have some current and voltage protection functions as well as yeah, well known from the 7VE from the paralleling device himself. So now we talk about some benefits. Again, um, here we have the overview about benefit. So my message to you is um, that we have a unified platform. That means we have uh, one CPOTEC 5 platform, which is reliable, which is stable, uh, very efficiency, and uh, can provide also the efficiency of the 7 vu um, the, the configuration with Dixie 5 is easy and very, yeah, um, very good from this uh, usability as well. Uh, and then of course the device is future proofed. So that means we have the cybersecurity um, on board. We have the latest generation of hardware at all West and we have uh, also the possibility to use the HSBT um, device uh, in a process based application. So then when we talk about ditches as substation, it is, it is also possible to use here the 7VU. So last slide, and uh, this is yeah uh, what I want to give you as uh, as uh, yeah highlights here for our system, and um, I hope my presentation was good, and um, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Sebastian, for this uh, very great uh, detailed presentation. Um, of course, we are a little bit over the time, um, but uh, we have several questions and um, whoever has time to, uh, to join us a little bit longer, uh, do not hesitate to stay here and uh, we go through the questions now. Um, for all others, um, we, can also, we have a recording of this event and you can uh, li listen and follow up later. Um, so let's see, the first question here um, is, from, uh, is, is about the um, expected lifespan and uh, also uh, yeah please provide the full demo animation video I think the lifespan is uh, this is a question with regards to all uh, Zipotec yeah, 5 this, family this, yeah, this, this, this is the this is the lifespan of the the, the complete Zipotec 5 family um, so that means that the Zipotec 5 platform <clears throat> offers more possibilities so that means we do not talk about any any phase out of Zipotec 5 so that means that the platform have the possibility to add more and uh, to live longer. So therefore there is no, no topic regarding the lifespan. And of course, uh, later we will have as well uh, an animation video. I would like to provide an animation video how to use a yeah, HSPT system and what are the difference between HSPT and uh, ATS system. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And the uh, next question is um, what are the techniques for, uh, to, for or to avoid expensive and unnecessary plant shutdowns, plant shutdowns, but I think that was exactly uh, explained with the functions of the yeah. uh, 7 oh, 85 oh, after, Afterwards, if, if, uh, if you have yeah. some questions regarding, regarding some special cases or so on, please contact me or the uh, sales representative and then we can talk about that. Uh, but finally, of course, the HSBT system is offering everything to avoid expensive and unnecessary plant shutdowns. Um, is there a high-speed transfer solution also for large LV motors uh, or is it impossible because of very fast voltage collapse in LV motor buses? Uh, that's a really good point. Uh, I, I heard several times regarding regarding LV uh, motor motor buses, um, and uh, due to that, uh, the inertia of the of the motors and the LV uh, surrounding is is not so big, so that we have not enough enough voltage uh, on the on the motor bus, and therefore, yeah, it needs to be discussed. It would be fine if if you would contact me and then we can discuss this use case and then I hope we found the solution, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, do not hesitate. We also like to learn from such cases. Yeah. Okay, next question. If there is a fault on bus, then which would the HSPT initiate commands for coupler? However, in this case, bus coupler can feed rest 
of the bus fault. Uh, but is is there any built-in function in order to make sure the bus bar fault? Uh, I'm not 100% sure about the question, but I think there is uh, the interaction between uh, the relay, uh, the v oh. VO85 and the protection relay. The, uh, and the the pre of course, yeah. there is a different, as I, as I explained in my, my presentation, so there are different possibilities to block the HSBT function. So we, we make to, we need to be sure that there is no fault on the motor bus, otherwise we cannot transfer. So, and we can have a blocking signal, which is coming from internal, or we have the blocking si signal himself. So that means the HSPT functionality is checking the conditions, the fault-free conditions on the motor bus. And only in that case, if we have a fault-free fault -free condition on the motor bus, we can initiate a, a transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, can you share your uh, functional block logic diagram for the for, of the HSPT relay? Yeah, yes, you, you, yes of course. You found the, the functional block logic diagram in the, in the power plan, uh, power slides or uh, in, <laughs> in my PowerPoint slides, or you find a better or deeper, uh, more um, yeah, in detailed description in the manual, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's the, and the last question for today um, is fast mode reliable? How often a, tran uh, a transfer is completed through fast mode and not through real time fast mode or in phase mode? Okay, <laughs> there's an expert. Uh, <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, the fast mode is reliable when the conditions, all the conditions are met. So that means we need a very fast decision to close the breaker. That means the conditions also for the measuring and the monitoring on the voltage on the mm. motor bus needs to be good. And then we can close the breaker in fast mode. Otherwise, as I told before, uh, the most of the transfers are initiated by uh, the real-time fast mode um, or in phase mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, then that's it for today. Thank you very much for your interest in our new product. Um, if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to contact us or your local representatives. Yes, and I wish you a nice day. Goodbye. Bye, thank you. <laughs>